Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Scott Smith. I am your host for today's webinar. Uh, here with our special guest, Dr. Will Dayenport. Uh, we also have Dylan Rogers, another school employee here, uh, helping out, answering questions. Uh, we're going to give a couple minutes to let everybody get on, uh, but I'm just going to run over some some basic ground rules uh, and some logistics as we as we get started. Um, so the title for today's webinar is The Three Benefits of Technology That Schools Overlook. Uh, so the big themes that we're going to be talking about today are collaboration, accountability, and streamlining workflows. Now, a lot of these terms probably sound familiar to you. You probably, uh, you know, you already think about collaboration, you already think about accountability. Uh, but with Dr. Will, we're going to attempt to dive in a little bit further and, and go into the, these sort of unexpected benefits of technology. Um, He's got some great experience and great stories to share on this, uh, and so we should have a, a really good time diving in. Uh, we have a bunch of people who signed up for today's webinar, so we're going to give everybody a chance to, to get on. Um, as we go through this, I want to give everybody a, a quick heads up. Uh, we have a, a question box here on the GoToWebinar panel. Uh, so as we go through this webinar, we want to make this interactive. So if you have questions, um, you have comments, uh, Go ahead and, and type them in, and if you want to give it a give it a try now and just say hello to Dylan on the other line, uh, he'll be happy to answer. And and throughout the webinar, we're actually going to take breaks and we're going to surface some of these questions to Dr. Will himself uh, and have him answer them for all of you. So uh, feel free to ask questions at any time. Uh, we have a bunch of people uh, attending this webinar, so if we don't get to you, uh, we will follow up after the fact and get in touch with all of you. Uh, and if you have questions for Dr. Will specifically, uh, we, will, we will attempt to you know, pass those along to him and, and send you an email after the fact. So uh, don't be shy. Uh, please go ahead and, and say hello. And I see a bunch of you guys already doing so. So thank you for that. Um, and uh, as before we even uh, get into the content a little bit further, um, I'll just give you a brief overview of, of how, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, so, the first is dealing with collaboration and the snowball effect that happens when you create a uh, collaborative uh, school culture. Um, Dr. Will is going to dive into the sort of the, the basics of this and then and then take it a step further in, in sort of what's happened in his district. Uh, and then after that, we're going to dive a little bit into accountability. Um, we know this is a, a huge issue for a lot of schools, uh, a sensitive issue at times, and, and Dr. Will has some great perspective that he's going to share there that, that may be really helpful for you. And then the last part of this is uh, streamlining workflows and actually saving time. Uh, like we, we know uh, teachers definitely don't have time. Uh, administrators are very short on time. Uh, so any little bit of, you know, any hours that you can save throughout the day uh, are incredibly valuable. And, and Dr. Will's got some, some thoughts on that as well. Um, and as we are getting started, we still have a bunch of people who are, are signing on now. I'm going to put out a quick poll just to set a baseline. Uh, one of the things that we're talking about today uh, in, you know, with the technology, we're, we're going to often reference uh, Schoology's and LMS, uh, just because that's, that's one of the systems that Dr. Will, and we'll bring some other things into it as well. Uh, but as we get started, I want to ask a poll, uh, do you guys use an LMS in your school or district? Um, so I'm going to launch this poll, and if you could please select a, a multiple choice answer, uh, select the one that most applies to you, and uh, I'll leave this open for a few minutes uh, and let everybody's votes get in, and then I'll, I'll share the results with everybody. Uh, and a lot of you are asking, what is an LMS? Uh, this is referring to a learning management system. Uh, so you know, there's a, a lot of options out there. If you don't know what it is, just click Not Sure, and, and we'll be sure to address those answers, those questions as well. And we have just about everybody's votes in now. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and close the poll and show the results. And as you can see, 43% uh, of you already have an L uh, enterprise LMS. Uh, a lot of you are using a, a free alternative, and a bunch of you actually weren't sure. Uh, so this is the perfect place to be. Uh, we're going to cover all of these sort of basic questions as we dive into this. Uh, Dr. Will is going to give his own perspective on, on what an LMS is and, and how it's useful. Uh, so you know, bear with us, and we'll, we'll certainly get those, those, those questions answered for you. Uh, and now for the fun part. Uh, you guys have been very patient as we're, we're getting started. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Dr. Will now. Um, 
Dr. Will, welcome to the webinar. Hey, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing great today. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're, we're thrilled you, to have you, you on. Me? Yes, we can. Can you hear us? Can you hear us, Did Dr. Will? Me? Yeah, hello. Are we, are we, are you hearing me? Yeah, yeah, we're good to go. Uh, okay. So I would, uh, to, to give everybody some background on, on who you are, um, sort of what you do, you know, where in the world do you work, uh, and how long you've been doing it, just give us a sort of a 30 second run, rundown of that. Uh, I work with Hattiesburg uh, Public School District. Uh, I work with uh, teachers and uh, assisting them in uh, developing various ways to implement technology into their classroom. And uh, I work at uh, two locations, well, I oversee two locations that uh, are currently uh, have one to one devices. And uh, I just, you know, have a great time doing what I do. And, and how long have you been an instructional technologist now? Uh, three years. Three years. And, yeah. and just to give a little more context, I know you were in technology uh, before that. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do or, or sort of the previous roles you had held? Uh, beforehand, uh, I was actually uh, chief social strategist uh, for a career development company. And that just meant uh, managing and overseeing their uh, digital strategy, uh, creating content. Uh, and uh, developing relationships with other individuals who provided content. Great, great. Okay, so without uh, further ado, now that you guys have a little background on uh, Dr. Will and the, the Hattiesburg uh, School District, uh, I'm going to go ahead and, and sort of dive into the, the content here. Um, so, you know, one of the big themes today is collaboration. Uh, can you tell me what teacher collaboration means to you and what that looks like? Uh, it means people, I mean, teachers actually working together, uh, communicating, sharing, uh, really sort of a as a team coming together to discuss uh, what they're doing in their classrooms, learning from one another, growing uh, with one another, and uh, really, you know, coming out with the best possible outcomes uh, for their students, combining each of their individual strengths. Okay, and and you know that's all great, but who does it benefit then? Like, what is the the purpose of it? Well, it definitely benefits the teachers uh, and and the students uh, as well. I mean, for the teachers, uh, you have the benefit of not having to go at it alone. Uh, they have their other uh, colleagues to plan their lessons, uh, to work together, to share resources. Uh, to plan out uh, lessons ahead of time and, you know, really, again, as I said before, to rely on everyone's strengths. So with one teacher who may be stronger in creating assessments, but someone may be other in projects and someone may be other in delivering direct instruction, everyone is working together and pulling resources. It definitely benefits the students because they have better learning experiences because, again, they get a chance to benefit from all of their teachers working together. And, and then what, what role do you play in this? As an instructional technologist, um, you know, do you just say teachers, you know, start working together more or how does that work? Uh, well, during our, you know, school that you training, uh, working together was a part of that training and we show teachers how, uh, whether it be it's in collections or via groups, how they could actually plan out lessons and work together. And what was awesome uh, for some for the ninth grade team that I work with now, they actually have all all of the ninth grade team is off at the same time, which normally doesn't happen. You know, people get time off as teams, but the entire ninth grade was off except one teacher. Uh, so just being able to you know meet with teachers and uh, talk to them about you know, how they can share, what they're sharing, and asking them questions because, you know, I didn't say this earlier, but, you know, I'm here and, you know, people are saying some nice things about me, but teachers do the work. They're, they are the champions, the MVPs here, mm -hmm. uh, and so I got have to give them credit for actually taking it upon themselves to run with it and to 
you know, actually buy into working together and working together. And then, you know, in Schoology, uh, if you're familiar with the platform, uh, you see updates. And so I see updates all the time of, oh, I put this close read in my folder uh, for other teachers, or we're working on this project. Uh, I have these resources. Anyone who wants them, you know, feel free. Uh, so they're really taking it upon themselves. What I pretty much do, I have conversations and ask questions and when and try to really get them to discover what exactly they want to do and offer feedback in that way. And so you say you ask questions to them. Can you give you know an example of, of a question you might ask or a conversation that you had? Uh, well, there's these two teachers who uh, don't, they're uh, history teachers and they don't have the same planning period off, oddly enough, when I mentioned one of the teachers who didn't have the same. And so the only time they could actually meet was pick some time out uh, sort of in the hallway, but they mostly did it in school gym. And with that, you know, being able to, to say, okay, well, what are you trying to do? Because one of the teachers was very uh, adventurous and just love to really jump on things and to be able to go okay you want to do this let's look at that or have you thought about using using this tool or have you thought about using this as a way uh, to better deliver instruction and so it's just sort of those conversations that I have uh, because what I have learned in this job is uh, not to dictate the teachers but to coach them up and to really ask them questions and let them discover what they want to do and assist them in getting there. And, and when teachers are collaborating in your district and they're sharing resources, does that mean like they're sharing a worksheet or you know a homework assignment or a, you know question bank or you know what what is what is that like what are the actual uh, things that they're sharing with each other? Uh, some are creating question banks. Uh, some are sharing actual uh, tests, uh, different assessments, uh, different resources. Uh, it, it just varies. Like, uh, for example, at the middle school, uh, the instructional technologist there, Albert, Albert Galeas, uh created uh, a master course where 7th uh, and 8th grade teachers are in there actually in that course building out different modules, actually building out courses. And from that, those teachers can then, as you know, take the, take the courses that they've uh, built together and then put it either in their resources or put it in individual courses that they're teaching. Uh, so it just really depends on, you know, what teachers are sort of trying to, to do with the tool. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I have teachers at the ninth grade via collections are building, uh, they're working together there. So people are just putting in different things. Okay, here's, here's a test here, here's an assessment here, uh, here's an activity here, here's a discussion there. And from there again, just being able to take those and then put them in their courses wherever they fit. Okay, and, and so we, we've talked about sort of what they do using technology. Uh, can you give us some examples of, of how that's changed things outside of you know the classroom outside of the you know the iPad or the the Chromebook or, or whatever it is. Well, I, I'm I'm noticing that you know teachers are really talking more and really uh, getting together and and sharing uh, again. You know I don't want to just keep saying sharing, 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 but that's what they're doing. They're having these discussions. They're sharing these tools. So if if someone finds something somewhere else online then they're going, hey, they're posting it in Schoology, I found this activity as an exit ticket. And then, or they're talking back and forth. Uh, this one teacher, one of our biology teachers, actually went to a conference, found the tool, was very excited about it, actually sent me an email from the conference saying, hey, I found this. And when she got back, started talking to her colleagues about this tool. It happened to be quiz is. And from there, the science team actually started working together in creating, you know, different quizzes, activities, and sharing it with each other. So as the team, uh, though they did plan together inside of Schoology, but outside of Schoology, you know, that's where they would, you know, meet face-to-face -face 
and have these discussions and, t and talk about, oh, I'm doing this unit. Well, what have you? Do you have planned for that unit? And I've just seen just an increase in that dialogue, uh, and teachers really sort of looking at this as a joint venture versus, you know, this is my classroom. This is my Hallow Halls per se. Great. And we're we're getting some questions now uh, about the different tools that that are used in your school. Um, is it is it are these just be, are you, can you give a a couple of them or name a couple that are that are most used and uh, you know do they work with Schoology or you know what's the relationship there? Uh, Nearpod mm -hmm. uh, is uh, one of the most used tools and uh, Edpuzzle uh, is another one. And and how do those work with your LMS? Well, uh, Albuquerque's you know you know uh, it was funny because. We had another conversation earlier about this, but uh, he put uh, Nearpod in Schoology where it was sort of opened up within the frame of Schoology. And so students to access it did not have to leave Schoology to access it, nor did teachers have to do it. So they could actually launch it within Schoology. And what that began to do was help the process of using Schoology as that central hub for digital instruction, and you know, as opposed to uh, you having teachers, you know, you go to this site over here, you go to that site over there, you go to this site over here. Sure. We have, you know, we started to get that central location where everything sort of flowed from. Right, and and we we did also get a few questions, you know, in the very beginning about what is an LMS, uh, and you did mention sort of that central hub. Uh, what, do, what does it mean for you, or like, what, it, like, how would you define it? Um, and it, it doesn't have to be specific to school, but how would you define it? You need something, you know, not only to deliver and facilitate that online instruction, uh, but you need a space for uh, communication, for collaboration. Uh, that space where, and I, and what I like about Schoology. Uh, is where you can have that full sort of vertical integration of communication, meaning if myself or Abigailas or Kerry wanted to speak to teachers, we could do it to all teachers within the district. If the superintendent wanted to deliver a message to teachers, it could be done throughout the district, uh, not to mention admins could speak directly to teachers. People can communicate uh, with each other within the platform. A, a great example is from the middle school where uh, Dr. Williams, the principal there, doesn't even make announcements over the intercom anymore because announcements go through school with you. Uh, so, you know, it's interesting for me to pop in sometimes and you'll see, oh, bus 111, uh, you'll be riding bus 33 today. So it has become, you know, a central part of the communication uh, with, within the school. and. And so when I look at that piece we were saying, what is the LMS? It encompasses everything, not only how you facilitate digital instruction, but communication, collaboration, and not only within, within your district, but outside as well. Because with Schoology, with these different PLCs that are in there, uh, you're able, our, our teachers, or anyone there, you're just able to communicate with teachers across the US and across the world and be able to share resources and activities and dialogue and ask each other again questions. What are you doing in your classroom? Uh, I'm teaching this unit. You're teaching that unit. Uh, how did you address this standard? So it's all encompassing. Great. So uh, I just want to thank the audience for the questions that are coming in. Uh, keep them coming. You see this uh, this question box. Uh, please uh, continue to ask questions as we go through this. Now. Dr. Will, as uh, you just said, you know, teachers are collaborating, they're sharing resources online, um, you know, and they're, they're adding, you know, all of these materials to the, to the LMS and, and it enables them to do all these things. Uh, and now all their stuff is online uh, and, and you can see it. So, so what does that mean? <laughs> well, uh, I... Honestly, I have to admit that over time, you know, I sort of changed how I viewed it. But, you know, in the beginning, when we talk about accountability and being able to see everything, you know, at first it came down to leadership wanting to see uh, usage reports. And with Schoology, you're able to see not only 
what as a district you're doing, but school by school, teacher by teacher. And you know, after uh, that sort of bumpy road with that, uh, I started to use being able to go into teachers' classrooms and seeing what they're doing as a way to inform my practice. Uh, so if I saw, uh, let's say, a teacher was doing this activity, then once I you know, go to visit their classroom, I could say, oh, hey, I saw in your class that you were doing this. Well, have you thought about uh, doing it this way? Or have you thought about maybe doing a Google Hangout to actually connect your students to an expert or to another class uh, to discuss what you're doing in class. Uh, so the transparency part works well, uh, but I think, you know, use it to inform practice, I guess, to see what's going on, but not as a punishment of, uh, you know, I see what you're not doing sort of thing. Sure, sure. And so, you know, when you, when you, you talked a little bit about this initial reaction, the way you saw it initially, um, once you got all the course materials and, you know, the teachers and the students online uh, in your district and in your, in your school, uh, what was the reaction and how did, you, how did you deal with that? Within any technology implementation, and we have all experienced this, you're going to always have those teachers who are your rock stars and they're going to just take off with it and they're going to run and those will be the teachers, uh, quite honestly, down the line will pose your greatest challenge because you're trying to go, well, how do I keep up with them? You know, how do I push them? Uh, you have that middle group uh, that are there, they're using it, but still trying to find a way. And then you have that bottom uh, group that, uh, quite honestly, they don't want any part of it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some of the initial reaction with teachers, you know, quite honestly, was I didn't want anyone in my classroom. Uh, because being able to see what's going on, being able to show leadership if they were to ask uh, reports of what's happening, what's not happening, uh, there was uh, pushback with that. And so for me, you know, that's when I had to change the narrative and not let the conversation on their end be about Someone is in my class. Someone is, is telling me I need to use this, I need to do that, and started to look at, okay, we're in this thing together. Uh, how can we get better? How can I be of assistance to, us, to allow you to do what you do best? And sort of once that narrative was changed, it changed uh, our relationship, quite, quite honestly, because you know, they didn't see me as someone from central office. Uh, it was more, started to become more of a partnership. And that's when, you know, we really started to work together because I started to actually teach, see teachers and socialize and help teachers doing homecoming with decorations and, uh, you know, go on field trips as a, as a chaperone. Dr. Will, are you a dancer? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I didn't go to the dance. I tipped with decoration. <laughs> uh, you know, but, it, it, you know, doing that, so again, with that change in the narrative of I didn't, don't look at this, you know, I don't, again, I didn't want teachers to see this as an imposition, but see this as a way to get better at what they're doing. Right. Because, again, we're here for the students. And so that's why I just had to change the narrative of how can we be better? Uh, and it was always about the we, the we, the we, the we, and never about you, 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 or even I, I, I. And so once I switched that narrative, uh, that's when things definitely changed. And you could see differently how they re re related to me. You know, more teachers sort of came to me. Usage went up, and then te other teachers took uh, greater risk because of it. 
Right. Yeah, I, and I think this is a, a really important point. Just because when you when you are adopting new technology, you know, one of the, the biggest fears from an administrative standpoint is, you know, can I get my my, my teachers or my faculty to use this? Um, and and your sort of method of, of approaching it, of the you know the using the we, like how can we work together? Uh, I think that's a that's a really important lesson that can can be applied to just about anything. Um, within a, within a school, you know, creating that partnership uh, is is quite important. Um, and we we have some other questions here too. Um, mm -hmm. But before we move to that, uh, I would like to get an idea of where you guys are now. So you know, you went through this process. You, you added the new technology. You got all the courses online where you had visibility and you could sort of inform best practices and teachers could help each other. Um, and you, you know, you got you created that sort of mentality of a of a partnership between the instructional technologists and the teachers. Uh, so, what does that look like now? Um, tell me how things have have changed in your district since since completing this journey. Well, we're you know we're we're still uh, growing uh, in this district uh, with this, and uh, you know we all have different experiences. Uh, again, I want to throw a shout out to Albert Galeas, uh, who's the instructional technologist at uh, the middle school. Uh, you know, his teachers really uh, look to him, you know, as a guide, and he's a great coach with them. And, and you know, his teachers keep, you know, getting better and keep e evolving uh, in their practice. Uh, and, you know, I'm seeing, again, you know, great strides uh, in mine. And in some classes, you know, teachers have been very excited. Uh, to come to me and say, hey, you know, I'm seeing growth in my students on uh, testing. And, you know, I, because they're holding them accountable as well, you know, because the work is in Schoology. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like uh, I give you a sheet of paper, I give you a packet, and you lose it, and you say, well, I don't have it, I can't do the work. The work is there. And so, you know, one of the teachers uh, that you know, I like to call him my general. Uh, he always tells his student, I will hold you accountable for this work. Uh, I, I expect, I demand greatness. And his students have risen to the, to the occasion. So uh, we, we have seen great progress. And I, I get excited, you know, because when I hear those stories, you know, I get excited, but always, again, point it back to the teachers because they, they do the work. Right. All right. So one of the questions that we're getting uh, right now uh, is is talking about um, how do you see this working for a small charter school that focuses on the arts and is expanding expanding to include a technology focus. So this is from Caitlin uh, Picana, um, and and I wanted to bring up this question just because uh, to get your perspective of the the different subjects that. The, that Schoology gets used in at your district and, and the different ways that it gets used in those subjects? It, one of the great things about Schoology is the platform allows for flexibility. So if you are more of a testing area, a tested area, uh, where you're definitely going to be giving uh, you know, tests that have, you know, right or wrong answers, you know, A, B, C, fill in the blank, those things. Teachers have that ability. You also have uh, discussions. There are other assessments you can do. You can actually embed other content, you know, in Schoology as well. Uh, and so it's not something that gives us, gears itself just to an academic uh, area. Uh, I, I knew this uh, one uh, teacher who taught a techn technology course and he gamified his course in Schoology. Uh, and so, you know, kids were in there. Uh, he said that whoever won uh, this activity, they were able to rename the other team's team and change their picture <laughs> until the next activity. That's motivation. Yes. So uh, there's different things that you can do. And so for that person who says, okay, we're an art school, uh, being able to put in videos, I mean, you can do projects. Uh, there's just so much and being able to and again you know Galeas spearheaded this now Galeas you keep hearing me bring your name so I hear your name up so I expect a check tomorrow um, he has shown me a lot in terms of what the platform is able to do 
-hmm. and knowing that there is just so many because we know so many activities are out there so many sites so many lessons so many things and all of that can be just put in the Schoology uh, whether you put in the link embedded as a page uh, put the actual site within the frame of Schoology there's just a lot of things that you can do right we also have a is sort of a follow-up to that question. Um, you know, you you work specifically with a, a middle school, and you have a one-to-one -one program. Uh, can you comment on how it might work in you know very young grades, like kindergarten, first grade, uh, and how that how that may work, like in, in, ter in terms of like involving parents in this in the child's edu education? The parent piece, uh, I I can speak to, uh, not from a greater person experience uh, but I do know that the middle school uh, last year uh, and this function is to everyone uh, gave parents you know accounts parents created accounts that had these and so you're able to go in and see you know what your students are what your child is doing you can see the work uh, you can see what's being turned in you can see the grades uh, in the grade book uh, with that also you can have groups if you want to to actually have that so other communication with parents now in terms of actually using Schoology to facilitate uh, instruction uh, with kindergartners uh, I've heard of it uh, but we have yet as a district uh, to use Schoology with such a young age group okay and then the, the last question before I move on to the next section is, can an instructional coach uh, facilitate a professional development with teachers through Schoology with the same interactive features a teacher has uh, with students such as the discussion features, content delivery, work submissions, etc.? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I have put it, you know, I created this course uh, for the ninth grade team and then that is a Schoology course and some other stuff. Uh, Galeas did the same thing, uh, so you can definitely facilitate in, uh, professional development that way. And what is really interesting is uh, Lowndes County, uh, which is a district in uh, Mississippi. Uh, they actually develop, I mean, deliver online modules to teachers, whether it be get to, you know get to know your Mac or Google Apps or whatever. And when those teachers go through those modules, they'll get a badge, a certificate, and they get CEUs uh, for the effort. So it's definitely something that can that can be done. And we are trying, we are planning to do more of it uh, last, uh, next year. I know Galeas uh, did work with teachers uh, uh, this year with that, and I wanted we definitely plan to do more of it next year. Great, yeah, and, and Mike Mackey, who uh, asked that question, our, our last webinar was actually specifically how you can use Schoology for professional development, and that was about an hour long, uh, so there's a, there's a lot of content in there. Uh, I'll follow up with you after the fact just to, to, to send you that video so you have it. Uh, if anybody else wants it, just email Scott at Schoology, and I'm happy to, to help out with that. Uh, so moving on to the next uh, big topic that we have today um, is where we're talking about streamlined workflows. Um, so one thing that got brought up earlier is using, you know, an LMS as the hub for everything. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about that in, in you know, in the state of, of education today uh, when teachers potentially have, you know, dozens of apps that they've selected themselves, uh, how that affects your job as an instructional technologist and, and sort of how that affects the learning in the classroom? Well, it's de definitely helpful, uh, particularly if you're able to do certain things that, that are single sign-on, so uh, you don't have to create uh, multiple accounts right. uh, for students or teachers don't have to do that. Uh, what sort of happened with us earlier in the year was, when, you know, I spoke earlier about administration wanting to look at uh, usage data. And so we saw some dip but we noticed that teachers were using other tools so let's say nearby for example and we just said okay uh, we know that we have all these tools so we're a Google Apps district uh, we have nearpod teachers are using air puzzle and a lot of other uh, different tools and so instead of having teachers 
deal with all of these tools uh, in a vacuum and just say, hey, we're going to go to this cycle, that site, log in here, log in there, let's bring it together. And to deal with that fragmentation, we said, okay, Schoology will be the central hub for which all of your digital instruction will flow through. And that's when, you know, Galea started to uh, put those things in. And even when I would work with teachers and I would say, and I would look for certain sites, I, if, if I saw where there was an embed code, I said, okay, this is on my, this is on my list, this is on my to-do list to share with my teachers. Because I knew that could be added as a page mm -hmm. uh, in the Schoology. And so, to re so when teachers started to, to sort of get into that groove and everything flowing through, it also helps uh, students when they're accessing this work outside of, outside of class at home. Because they're not, again, they're not having to log in to all these different sites. They're going through, straight through Schoology and everything is just right there for them. Great. Right. Uh, and before you had, you know, Schoology, um, can you can you give us a snapshot of, of what that looked like for you and and when you had all these different apps that were floating on like what why did that cause a problem for you? But it wasn't necessarily you know an, an issue because we had not yet you know gone one to one. Mm -hmm. uh, so with teachers there there were different things that different teachers were doing around the district. So it wasn't necessarily sort of an, of an issue until you went from so many devices to a gang of devices. Uh, you know, it, it just seemed like overnight things just like boom, exploded with these Chromebooks. And now with that came, okay, now we have all of this. And how is and how will all of the tools work together? And that's when, you know, we started to, to really look at Schoology sort of in, in that way. And I know that's something that uh, our CIO, uh, Dan Conrad, wanted was to have an, uh, an LMS that will allow for all of those things to sort of work together and to be done through that way. So uh, I see the slide changed. Uh, but yeah. yeah, once all of the devices sort of came online and all of the tools that we were using came out and we actually introduced teachers to, to additional tools, you know, we just wanted that that central hub, that one location for communication, teacher collaboration, facilitation of digital in, instruction, uh, sharing, all of that. I mean, it's it's awesome uh, because even like right now, you know, if later on tonight I'm on Twitter and I find something that is amazing, uh, I instead of sending out an email, a mass email out to, to schools, I can actually go into the ninth grade teachers group that I've created for teachers and put that tool in there. Uh, I can find, in, and then they do, they're doing the same thing. So, mm -hmm. uh, and that would, I mean, you know, what, what can you say when teachers take ownership? I mean, that's, that's what you, I mean, that's what you want. Uh, not that I'm trying to work myself out of a job, but when <laughs> teachers, uh, you know, but when teachers take that ownership and they are really, you know, sharing and they're really excited about it, and then they're taking it upon themselves to to go out and find different things and bring it to their colleagues. I mean, that's, I mean, that just brings me joy. I imagine, and and what you you mentioned some integrations uh, in your district. What are the most popular integrations? Uh, Nearpod and Google Apps. Okay. So those will be uh, the most used. And at the uh, sixth grade and and Berger uh, Middle School as well, we have another program called Classworks. Uh, so those are being uh, used as well. Okay. Yeah, and and we'll dive into Google Apps in, in just a second and, and get a little more into that because I know we're getting some questions on that. Um, Let's talk about this. Uh, when we were talking earlier, you, you mentioned a story uh, where you, 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 your school was in a situation where you had to stop using paper and, and the toner and spending time with the copier. Uh, can you give us some background on that and, and what the, the result of like what, what opportunity came from that and, and how did it change the way teachers work? Well, you know, 
we had some issues uh, that uh, you know we're we're working our way uh, work, working our way through, uh, but it provided opportunities for teachers to break free of the stranglehold that paper has. Uh, and so what I enjoy, uh, again, most ab about it is teachers, you know, I, I can't say enough about that ownership, but when teachers realized what they could do in a digital classroom as opposed to, uh, you know, to you know, be in that traditional classroom, but mm -hmm. to move more towards that digital classroom, uh, it was really awesome to see. Uh, you know, when teachers are saying, you know, hey, I'm putting all of this there, uh, and it's saving me time, and my students have access to this 24-7. And uh, one story was interesting because I actually had a fifth grade teacher tell me, hey, I've been going paperless, but parents are saying, hey, where's the paper? Uh, because, you know, nothing was going home. Uh, but so it's been really good, you know, for that transition uh, into that digital classroom. Great. And, and I, you know, when you, when you look at how much paper your average school building uses and, you know, you, you multiply that across an entire district, uh, we're talking about boxes and boxes of, of paper, that, and that adds up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so, so, you know, in that situation, I, th I think it was, it was great that the teachers were able to find an alternative to, you know, printing out these course packets or, you know, printing out, you know, the, all the makeup work that a student had to do and, you know, spending the, the hours in front of the, the copier doing so. Uh, and instead, you just put it on school. Is that a lost, yeah. your, lost your audio? Your Can video. you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay. Well, I think uh, your audio dropped just for a second, but we're gonna we're gonna keep heading forward and, and hopefully you, you join us back in a second. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. Um, so one of the the really important things about workflow is is saving time and, and being able to apply those cost savings across an entire district. Um, you know, you yourself were a huge, I mean, you are a huge Google advocate. Uh, can you talk about your background there and, and why you didn't just use, you know, Google Apps for Education or Google Classroom or something like that uh, in your district? Well, I, been you you know I guess many people here have been using Google Apps uh, for for a long time, and uh, <laughs> and I you know it, it's just a perfect platform for me. I don't even I don't live in Word, I don't live in Office. And, you know it's all about that because you know whether I'm on my phone or a tablet or laptop or Chromebook, I always have access uh, to everything that I need. Uh, so I'm very you know there and. I used to be uh, the GEG Mississippi uh, leader, so it's been. I'm just all, all there uh, with the Google. Okay, and and so you know, if you're if you're quote unquote a Google dude, uh, why yes. didn't your district choose to? I mean, why school did you then? Well, when we first, you know, came on with this uh, one to one initiative, Google Classroom. You know, it just came out. And though uh, over the past couple of years uh, there's been changes and Google Classroom has gotten a lot better, it's still not ready for what we need and what we're using in the district, you know. Uh, so it's not quite where it needs to be. Now, with Schoology, uh, we had a tech team. Uh, the tech team, uh, how it came about, was organized uh, by our uh, CIO, uh, Dane Conrad, and the superintendent, uh, Dr. Williams, instructional technologist. We had teachers on the tech team, uh, and then Abel Galeas, uh, who was teaching ICT2 at the time, had been actually using Schoology in his class. And so we looked at, you know, different platforms. 
and uh, after you know reviewing and everyone getting a feel for different things, uh, we came to the agreement that Schoology was going to be the platform we would use. And and you said you know Google Classroom wasn't ready. You obviously still use a ton of Google Apps, um, yes. but are not ready. Uh, can you give us some examples of, of just like the the key parts of, of Schoology that that you know sort of swayed you guys in that direction? Uh, what I will say now, in terms of you know when you talk about let's say fragmentation, mm -hmm. uh, you with Google Classroom, I mean. You, you have a huge fragmentation there and what I mean by that is in order to have everything that Schoology has uh, the communication piece uh, you, would you would have to combine, you would have to throw different Google apps with inside of Google Classroom. Let's say uh, for example uh, Google Plus in the, with the groups mm -hmm. because that is not a part of Google Classroom. Uh, with Schoology, you have the ability to have those groups uh, to to be able to to do a lot of things. It's just a very uh, user friendly uh, interface. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people all they they marvel at the Facebook uh, sort of look and feel of it. So it's very easy to use. People get to it, and there's not that much of uh, sort of that learning curve of getting that feel for that sort of communication. Uh, it, I, I just, you know, when you talk about that communication piece, uh, to me, it's been awesome to see it uh, because, you know, teachers are, are there. And, you know, if you're using it like we're using it, you're, you're seeing announcements being made. You're seeing kudos uh, being given out. You're seeing, you know, people going on field trips and they're sharing. Uh, those pictures, and so you know, you're seeing all the inform all of the great things that are happening across the district, without there having to be, you know, a mass email uh, sent sent out to everyone. So it's a difference between you know working in a single classroom and, and sort of collaborating across an entire district. Yes, Google, I mean Google Classroom. If you are a one uh, person class. Uh, just for your class, depending on your subject area, I could say Google Classroom could work for you. But if you are a school district, uh, and particularly, you know, for us, creating a connected culture of learning, creating a community, was something that uh, we were looking to do, and we have seen success uh, at. Uh, so Schoology is by far uh, better for that. Right. Uh, now. We, we got some, some questions as well um, regarding your one-to-one -one devices. Uh, one of the questions was, you know, how long, like, is it, is it across all of K-12? And, and if not, you know, where, who, which, which schools have devices, which grades? Uh, and then how long did it take you to roll that out? And how did the LMS play into that, that process? Uh, we started out uh, 7th and 8th. Uh, and then this year we brought on six and ninth and two fifth grade classes uh, and third and fourth will be coming online uh, next year at another school. Okay. And and what what part did the LMS play in that rollout? Like how is how did how did those two two things work together and what what factored into those decisions? Uh, well, well, again, when we did the first initial rollout, you know, we wanted again that central hub uh, for to facilitate digital instruction and a place for teachers to be able to uh, communicate and collaborate and the things of those nature. And with the different grades again coming online, uh, it sort of allows for that communication. Now what I do want to say is you know we did not just put devices in you know teachers hands. I mean we did have a, a pilot group of teachers tried out different devices and the Chromebook was ended up being the selection but we had uh, uh, what we call a, a summer training or summer boot camp mm -hmm. before uh, 
we did anything else. And so teachers had training uh, with Schoology uh, and other things. So we didn't just, you know, go, oh, here's a bunch of devices and put them out there. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the, the next slide here. Um, can you talk about the, the ease of use and, and then its decision process, like how that factored in, uh, how that made your life easy or hard? Uh, just a, a couple words on that. Uh, again, you know, it's just a, a very uh, intuitive platform, uh, very, you know, easy to use, and it makes life easier for teachers. And so when teachers see that benefit, then uh, I have seen it be helpful in teacher buy-in. And so one clear example for me was the uh, within the ninth grade when they gave out the first nine weeks test. And I had, you know, teachers coming to me going, wow, that was easy. Uh, because, you know, instead of them having to grade, you know, 150 tests uh, by hand, uh, they, it was able to, boom, just like that in school. G. And so they were like, okay, this makes life a little easier here. Uh, yeah, and that was very helpful in the buying right there. Yeah, I, I think uh, buy-in is, again, a theme that we, we kind of stumble on over and over. Uh, and I, I think you hit on a good point there that if you're able to show them that something that's super easy, super sort of special early on, it makes the, that buy-in process a ton easier. Um, so uh, we also got some questions, again, about parents. I just want to loop back on this, this quickly. So, you know, with your, your setup, are parents able to see the work that students are doing, the grades they're getting? Like, what kind of visibility? And, and what, as an instructional technologist, like, what kind of uh, control do you have over that? When parents, uh, this year, uh, the parent accounts uh, haven't been set up. They were uh, set up last year, uh, and for for parents were able to see things, uh, see grades and, and things. And that is interesting because what we do not have with uh, our SIS uh, is that integration in terms of, you know, parents will go to Schoology and see that grade book, but then they will go to, let's say, Active Parent, which is from our SIS, and they will see, you know, different grades. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, there was some confusion uh, with that. Uh, with control, if you're talking about uh, what can you do on that control piece, I mean, you're able to create uh, groups with parents and with in Schoology allow for who who is able to initiate comments and who can't and sort of things like that. Yeah. Uh, next year, I would like uh, for you know the, the schools that I work with and and uh, to get more parents involved mm -hmm. uh, in Schoology. Uh, I think it is a great platform for that sort of. Uh, communication, not only with parents, but for parents to actually see, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis what their uh, students are, what their ch okay, to say students, what their children are doing. Right. Uh, and then, you know, just leave us with uh, your last sort of favorite school story or your favorite, you know, technology and, and teacher story. Uh, I, I think one of my favorite uh, stories, and I have a few, but I think one of my favorite is it, it has to do with uh, uh, Miss Bell, who uh, was an uh, English teacher, uh, one of my rock stars. Uh, she had to be out uh, for a few weeks, and and it was interesting because no one, you know, like I wasn't told anything. Uh, I just was kind of walking by her classroom. And notice the Chromebooks were out, and I was like, "Oh, I don't see Miss Bell." <laughs> and they're like, "Well, she's out, and we have a sub in here." And while she was out, she actually taught her class while she was out. And so her kids did not miss the instruction that students normally miss when teachers are gone for that period of time. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so it was really awesome to see that they didn't miss that that instruction. They were able to communicate with her. Uh, she was able to you know answer their questions, and I was I was okay. This was okay because I you know when you think about all of the things you can do and how this can be implemented, quite honestly, it just never even sort of crossed my mind that oh the teachers <laughs> going to be out you know three three weeks or so they can still keep it rolling. And uh, so it was uh, awesome to see that. And her kids, her kids enjoyed it. And I loved how her course was actually organized. Because when I found it out, well, let me see what this is. Let me go in. And so I was able to see, she said, oh, this day, day one, day two, these days. <laughs> That's days. awesome, yeah. And so kids were, you know, they were able to keep up track and know exactly what they had to do. So it was, it was awesome. That's great. Well, Will, before we sign off, uh, we're going to bring in uh, Adam Larson, who's the, the director of, of academic strategy here at Schoology. He's going to give people a quick run through of what the platform actually looks like. Uh, I know we've, we've mentioned Schoology a number of times in, in, throughout the course of this. Uh, so we're just going to give everybody a sneak peek of, of what it looks like. Uh, so Adam, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the, the presenter over to you. I was actually more interested in hearing more of uh, Dr. Will's stories, personally, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me know if you see my uh, screen yet. We're all good. Awesome. Well, you know, one of the great things I think that Dr. Will mentioned, I mean, really the whole point of this webinar, uh, this particular webinar, is all those outcomes uh, of the benefits of technology that, that you don't even count on. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to talk specifically about an elementary school teacher and how she's getting benefit um, from Schoology in ways that you might not have thought of before. Um, so I'm going to go into Ms. Darnell. Ms. Darnell is a second grade teacher. could be one of the teachers that even Dr. Will's working with um, <laughs> over there in Mississippi. Uh, but this is Schoology. This is what the home page looks like. Whenever you log into G, you see a three-column layout. On the left-hand side is the navigation. Uh, in the middle is sort of the, the recent content, all the aggregated information from courses and groups. And on the right-hand side is the upcoming events, reminders, and things that are specifically associated with Ms. Darnell. Um, this is a kind of her landing page, if you want to give it Now, Ms. Darnell does a lot of different things within Schoology, but specifically I want to go into her second grade course and, and just show you how she has set that up. Um, Ms. Darnell really uses Schoology as a place to house all of her content. I know that we were talking about fragmentation earlier, and that's always a danger when, when teachers are starting to adopt new tools. Um, trying to get all those tools in one place is difficult. So Ms. Darnell uses uh, Schoology course to house all of that content, whether it's math, ELA, science or social studies. It's all right here in a course. And she can quickly add materials um, herself or even import them from resources. A uh, second grade district level um, group where content is being created at the district level and being shared with the teachers. Or maybe this is a second grade group right there on their campus where she's working with a teacher next door. Or possibly this group could be even a, a global one where she's taking content from uh, the world. So it's a great, great way for her to access content. But one of the neat things, too, that we don't think about is all the content that Ms. Darnell puts into this course, she can access anywhere. So, for instance, Ms. Darnell could be in her classroom and she uh, has maybe a reading that she's posted into her course. She can easily access that right from her phone and be able to engage with the students. Or maybe she's opening up a rubric and she's grading projects like that students are completing. Again, she could access that right from her smartphone anywhere she is. Um, in addition to that, we like to talk about the, the teacher, uh, the, the student experience. Uh, within Schoology, it's really quick for Ms. Darnell to just go to course options, to view course as, and even see what students are seeing in her Schoology course. We're going to select Maria, and this is Maria's experience. Notice it's a really clean interface. This is still the three column layout, but for Maria, she just has today's work. So she doesn't have to worry about finding any specific content. And then that content can be in nature. It could be something like an office mix where students are uh, comparing numbers. It could be an activity such as um, a, a virtual, where they're going to Monterey Bay Aquarium and there's a chance to interact with the different creatures they see in the embedded PowerPoint. Or it could be something that maybe you guys might be more familiar with is just a Google slide. So you have a Google presentation that has all your vocabulary words. Instead of always having a place, a wall dedicated to your vocabulary words, 
Now Ms. Darnell houses it online for students to be able to access anytime, anywhere, and you never have to get rid of it at the end of the six weeks. And there's also the interaction within a Google presentation. In addition to that, Ms. Darnell has also leveraged Schoology in a way that she didn't really take into account at first, and that's the communication with parents. So that now when parents are in that car rider line, they're looking to pick up their student, they're actually accessing Schoology from their devices. They're able to line, they're able to see what information is happening uh, with their student, uh, be able to take surveys, be able to look over grades, and all those things that a parent needs to be informed about what's happening in their student's life. Um, now, there are so many more examples that I could go over if, if I had more time. Uh, stories like Mr. Earl and his gamified Spanish class, Ms. Smith and, and how she's personalized learning for her English language arts, or even like a, a Mr. Conrad and as he's flipping his classroom in algebra. But that's where we would ask you to please contact us. We want to schedule a demo with you to be able to go over some of the great benefits of Schoology that you might have overlooked. Uh, we really appreciate you coming to the webinar. I just want to say on behalf of Schoology, thank you so much for being here. Uh, Dr. Will, we thank you for being here. And Scott, also wonderful job leading the presentation. And I hope everyone has a great rest of their day. Yes, I want to double that. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Um, if you want to follow up with Dr. Will, he is at Twitter at I am Dr. Will. Um, and if you want to join us for the next presentation, it'll be on May 25th. And we're going to talk about the questions to ask before buying an LMS. We're going to have another uh, Schoology ambassador come in and present for you guys and, and share his insights. Uh, so thank you, everybody, for coming. Uh, again, we'll reach out to you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, scott at schoology.com. Uh, we'll be happy to help. And, and thank you so much for attending. Everybody have a great afternoon uh, and a great weekend as well.